Well, I've been watching this um, channel. It's called Explore With Us. And they have all these videos on uh, different things. A lot of them are, are murderers and serial killers and stuff. And... Huh. <laughs> I, I noticed that there's a lot of similarities between me and them. Like, this is why I'm being profiled, basically. Because I like watching uh, murder documentaries and stuff like that. And not because I admire the murderers and shit. It's just because I'm addicted to stuff like that. Um, I always have been. It's not because I uh, think they're cool or they're wonderful or they're awesome or anything. Or because I want to be like them. It's because I just like watching um, documentaries about evil people and shit. And... Um, Let's see what else here. Um, oh, the fact that I have mental illness. I've been known to have a flat effect. I know that if I wasn't being murdered for one, and I was on some risperidone and maybe some kind of diazepam, that I would not have a flat effect at all. And I know it's from, um, it's not from schizophrenia, like you suppose. It's, my flat effect is from, uh, PTSD and trauma. And being murdered by the FBI doesn't help it any. Hello? So, I mean, like, you, like, see me, like, from time to time, like, out on the street even, or in my videos, if I have a flat effect... It's because of the severe thing that I'm going through, that I'm continuing to go through. Uh, oh, like, yeah, like after Todd died, I went on bestscore.com for a while. I told God I wanted to see all the evil that's in the world, and I saw evil in the world. Uh, I saw all sorts of videos of um, different things. People murdering people, people chopping people's heads off, people setting people on fire, people setting animals on fire. I saw this one guy take his daughter, I think she was probably about one years old, and he sat there, put a rope around her neck, and then hung her off of the off of the roof and she started making noises and so he leaned he climbed down and put all of his body weight on her and probably broke her neck i don't know but then he like pulled the rope up and set her down and supposedly he hung himself after that i've seen things on youtube that are horrible, that you can't unsee. <laughs> oh, shit. I have PTSD from watching some of that shit. Like, the cats in the bag. These Chinese people put these, all these cats in a burlap sack and um, put them on this hook above this boiling water and dumped, the, dumped all the cats in the water. And they were all crying and screaming and scratching each other, trying to get out of the bag. I've had nightmares about that video, watching that video. Nightmares. During the day, I, like, I have flashbacks to what I see on that video. I can't believe anybody would do such a thing to cats. Cats are, like, the most magnificent animal I, I didn't know you could damage yourself 
by watching things on a video. I didn't know you could actually get PTSD from that. I had no idea. And, like, I damaged myself, like, traumatized myself pretty severely. And after that, after I seen all the evil things that people were doing all over the world, I just like, I told God, I said, I don't want to live here in a world that is so evil. And uh, so I just didn't want to be here. You could take me out. I don't want to be here. That was after Todd died. I regret it now. I regret going on there and looking at all that stuff because it's not a movie. It's real life. And I uh, regret, I regret ever watching it because uh, <laughs> it hurt me so badly that I, you, you can, you can't unsee things like that. Like that, that little baby that the dad murdered, <laughs> she knew something was up. She wasn't able to talk or anything, but she started looking at her dad and she was she stopped um she was going like this and patting the ground and stuff and she stopped she started looking at him she knew something's wrong with dad people think that you could get away with uh doing things to a baby or a or a small child and think that, well, I can get away with it. They're only a, a baby or they're only a small child. They're not going to tell or they're, if they're a baby. They're not going to be able to talk about it. I can get away with doing it. Like when my aunt used to beat me in my high chair when I was one year old, she probably thought that I would never remember I never remember it, so she could do whatever she wanted to me. The FBI thought that they could hypnotize me, and I'd never remember, but I remember that. They thought that they could blow uh, devil's breath or scopolamine in my, in my face, and then I wouldn't remember that either, but I remember that. You see, there's something about me I have never, ever felt like I've had to hide who I am or pretend to be somebody else. The reason being is that I have nothing to hide who I am. People that try to hide, they're doing something wrong. And I've never felt like I've had to hide from the world or change who I am. The FBI just looks at me and they see what they want to see. Because I fit their profile of whatever profile that is. I wasn't watching that stuff to, and getting off on it. I was watching that stuff and being horrified, like, like, you know, like, um, seeing a traffic accident, you, you can't turn away because you're like, oh, whoa, you know.
if I would have known that I could be murdered just for my personality, just because I fit their profile, <laughs> I probably would have tried to hide. I tried to hide who I am. I'm not ashamed of going on the internet and uh, looking at that stuff because I don't believe in censorship at all. I think parents should censor what their children see, but I think if you're a grown-ass adult, you should be able to see what's really going on in the world. And if you don't know what's going on in the world, you should... Because there's some evil shit going on in the world. I've never murdered anybody. I'm, I'm not a murderer and I'm not a serial killer. But um, I can tell you the truth. The truth is... The only person that I've really thought about murdering in my life was Dwayne Allen Siders, the motherfucker that molested my baby girl from the age of two to the age of four. Yeah. I even plotted his murder. I thought about his murder. I thought about different ways to kill him. I daydreamed about it. One time I even talked to somebody to try to recruit them to help me kill him. But then I, I met Todd and I was like, I fell in love with him. And I, even though I wanted to go do that, I was like, no. I don't want to be away from this man. This this guy is... I'm head over heels for this guy. And that's, that's the only thing that stopped me from going to do it. But little did I know... The FBI more than likely had already killed him. They probably killed him right away. So the whole time I was thinking about murdering him, he was already dead. that and um, also um, since I found out that I'm being murdered yeah I've thought about murdering somebody and the reason is my my thinking in case you want to get inside my mind is this like Okay, for instance, that bitch Margarita that was here, she was going above and beyond to be a full-on come to me. She would, I would w hide away in my room and wait till there's nobody out there, and then I'd open up my room and start to go out. She'd always have her room cracked open, her door cracked open, and as soon as she saw me come out of my room, she'd get up like, oh, oh, and get up from her bed like, like this is her, you know, She's got to get up to come fuck with me. She followed me around the house and she had her walker and she'd like go like this and like uh, like a stamp on my feet and shit. And she, if she had her walk or her roller walker, she'd go like this and try to roll it into me. Uh, she, she, one time she called me a, a cow and, and then later she came up to me and started going, moo, moo. Um, what else did she do? Oh yeah, she had her poisonous parasitic gases coming from her room. And she probably had a personal gassing device on her. That's why she wanted to, every time I come out, she wanted to walk past me and like, so she could gas me out. Then I, I don't know what her problem was. Oh, yeah, and then she jerk, grabbed the door and jerked the door out of my hand when I was coming out of the bathroom. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought about it. I mean, part of me, part of me um, wanted to because I'm thinking, for one, <laughs> I'm being murdered already. They think I'm a murderer. I might as well give them a reason to murder me. Like, okay, now I'm a murderer. Now you have a fucking reason to kill me, right? 
Then I thought, you know, if I kill the bitch, they'll take me to a jail cell and they'll just gas me out and kill me there. So I was thinking that's a plus because I wouldn't be able to get away anymore. So I'm thinking that I'm thinking that, um, you know, I can't, I thought about it, but because I'm a Christian, I fear God. And I thought, and then I also thought, yeah, I thought, well, God, what if God doesn't forgive me for doing that? You know, what if I did that and, and God, and then I'd be a murderer. Then I would be a murderer. Then like, what would God think of me? When I died, would he, would he still have my back? That worried me a great deal. I thought about that a lot. So then I, I backed away from that idea. You know what I mean? If I wasn't a Christian, I wouldn't have thought about it, is what I'm saying. I would have just done it if I wasn't a Christian. But I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it. I'm not the type of person to just do something like all of a sudden I'm like a freak out mode and just like snap. I'm not that type of person to just do something and snap. I, I, I think about what I do and what I say. And um, yeah. So then I, I turned away from that idea and I thought, um, oh yeah, she was eating my food. I, I was putting my food in the refrigerator with my name on it. She was purposefully going in there every day and, and taking some of my food out. And that fucking pissed me off. I don't like thieves. I don't like thieves. People that steal from me are fucked. And um, so I, I was like, I was pissed. I was pissed. And then I thought, okay, well, if I, if I can't kill her, God, what can I do to her? <laughs> I thought, I thought, okay. My idea was, okay, since she's, she's eating my food on purpose, I thought, well, if I get some really nice, expensive shampoo... She and I would put my name on it. She probably use that because I, you know, because she knows it's mine. She'll probably be in there using it. So I thought I'll go down to the salon and get a couple of bottles of Paul Mitchell, right, and then take all the shampoo and conditioner out and fill it up with some Nair all the way to the top, and then put my name on it and put it up in the bathroom, <laughs> and I could just see that bitch in there. Oh, I'm going to show her. I'm going to use up all her shampoo. <laughs> and she would have, she would have got some serious hair loss. And then I thought, well, if, if I did that, if it didn't work, then I was just going to take a bunch of nair in my hand, walk up to her and go, here, have some lotion, bitch. And then, and then go into the bathroom and lock the door so she couldn't wash it off. <laughs> But uh, that didn't happen because uh, Steve moved her out of here. But um, I, I just I kind of want her to know that um, uh, before she left here, I took her toothbrushes and I scrubbed the toilet with them. <laughs> and uh. I pissed in a cup and I poured it into her shampoo and conditioner bottles. And it wasn't just a little either. It was a whole bunch. And then I shook it up and and, and uh, mixed it up real good. Put it back in there. <laughs> uh, so she, oh yeah, one time I took this great big nasty shit. You know the kind of shit that is so nasty it sticks to the sides? 
I took her toothbrush in there. I mixed up the turds real good in the toilet. <laughs> but apparently it had no effect on her. So, had no effect on her. But uh, anyways, I just, somebody's watching this. Please let that bitch know. <laughs> she was brushing her teeth with my shit and washing her hair with my piss. But I mean, I had to I had to do something because the bitch was pissing me the fuck off. And um there's a lesson to be learned here. If you're gonna be a full on cunt to somebody don't leave your toiletries in the bathroom that for everyone to have access to. That is a bad idea. Real bad idea. And, uh, oh yeah, and, um, don't fuck with somebody you don't know. And don't fuck with somebody that has nothing to lose. Now, I promise you this. Had I had no fear of God. If I, if I didn't love God as much as I do, I would not have thought about it. I would have just done it. But I'm not, I'm not a murderer. I'm not a murderer. But, uh, I sure did think about it, though. The fucking bitch was... She wouldn't leave me alone. Made me sick. Like, I thought about leaving, too. So, so I just told Steve, I said, if you don't get this bitch out of here, I'm going to leave. <laughs> and, I, and I knew that they were going to move her because they moved her into the other house. I knew they were going to move her because they didn't want me to leave because they want to murder me. So I knew they were going to move her because they didn't want me to leave. And they knew, because I told them, if they don't move, if they didn't move her out, I was going to leave. So. Anyways, I, I don't really feel like I even had a chance. See, the FBI uh, sees what they want to see and believes what they want to believe. Although I... I can't really blame them, though, because that, combined with the false witnesses like Jerry Martin Smith, you know, they believed whatever he said. There was no chance for me. I had absolutely no chance, no chance in hell, because they said they were, they've been, uh, they could send me messages like, songs like they've been watching there's no time that they haven't been watching me and stuff like that where was I um, which were, it makes me wonder if if the FBI if there's if they've been watching me my whole life how far back are we going here? Back to when I was a baby in that high chair? Did the FBI see me getting beat by my Aunt Lori? Did they see it? Were they just waiting for me to turn into this horrible person? Is that why they were watching me the whole time? I wonder. I mean, from my perspective, I could have turned into a horrible person. I could have, I'm sure. But um, I fear the Lord. I don't fear the FBI that much. I mean, I sort of do, but they're murdering me. I mean, but the Bible says not to fear man and what he can do to you. What can man do to me? They can kill this 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 body and that's all. 
God says, fear the one who can kill the body and lay your soul to waste. So I fear the Lord. I always have feared the Lord. I fear his judgments more than anybody else's judgments. Nobody's opinion makes a damn shit to me. I don't give a fuck about anybody's opinion because you're all a bunch of assholes. <laughs> huh. uh, I only care about God's opinion of me. And I know that he loves me. Yeah, I have a lot of faults. I've done a lot of fucked up things in my life. Have I been a lost sheep a lot of times? Yeah, I have. I've been down some pretty dark paths with alcohol and crack and heroin. Until that one day, I, I said, God, take this from me. It's, I cannot. It's too great for me. I cannot. I cannot do it. I literally turned over everything to him. I said, God, just, just take this from me. I give up. I can't fight this battle anymore. And um, eventually, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking crack, snorting cocaine, uh, shooting up heroin, uh, shooting up cocaine. Shooting up heroin and cocaine. I stopped doing all that. Huh. And then I met Jerry Martin Smith. And then he basically got me hooked on meth. And then I had another fight on my hands. This is when I was in the Dalles. And he, he, see, he made me feel so miserable that I felt like I needed something to help me. Something to help me through life because of what he was doing to me. And so, like, once he got me hooked on it, because he used to put it in weed and give it to me. He used to have other people put it in weed and give it to me. And I'd take a hit of the weed and be like, wow. This weed's got a fat bunch to it. It's pretty good weed. Where'd you get this at, you know? And uh, then, like, one time he... One time when we were in Coos Bay, I was in the dark tent, and he came back with a bunch of dope. He goes, I got some dope. We can either do it and have fun... Or if you want to, I'll take and dump it out. And I said, dump it out. He goes, well, I changed my mind. And he started getting it out. He's going to smoke it. And I go, I go, well, let me out of the fucking tent then. And I got out of the tent. And I went out, got out of the tent. And I was outside of the tent just a little ways. And it was dark. And he took a big puff of it, blew it into my face, and I instantly got high as fuck. And I go, do you got any more? And then it was like, you know, it's kind of like that. But I never, I never wanted to start. It's just like once you have it in your system, you're like, oh, can I have more? You know, that type of thing. It's the same as crack. Well, crack uh, had me a lot worse than meth ever did. And uh, that's, you know, when I was in the Dallas, Oregon, I knew I was going to die from this shit, from the meth. And I felt myself dying. Little did I know that the FBI was mixing up parasites in with the meth I was taking. So when I was injecting it into my veins or smoking it, I was um, taking in a lot more than just 
the meth that was taken in uh, parasites. Um, lots of times my my kidneys started to shut down and it was hard to move. I couldn't move from side to side. It was hard to walk. I was real, real tired. And I didn't know exactly why I was dying. I knew I was dying. That's when I decided that I had to leave. I had to leave Jerry Martin Smith and I had to leave this the dope. That's when I went to I left the Dallas and went to back to Roseburg, Oregon, over to Billy Wright's uh, halfway clean and sober house, where later I found out everybody was on drugs, on meth or something, or they were pretending. I don't know if they were all on drugs or that they were just pretending to be on drugs, but it was fucked. And Billy's like, well, I, I don't know if you noticed, but it's not really a clean and sober house anymore. No shit, motherfucker. You should have told me that before I fucking moved in there. Piece of shit. Anyways, so I had to put up with that shit. And then, but I, so I, 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 I left, left the dope behind, but then like, and I was just all I could do was cry and cry because um, I, I loved Jerry as much as you could love a piece of shit like that. I missed him and he started calling me. And then, you know, it was like, oh, maybe he does love me. Never fall for that shit. Then he called me again, and he's like, oh, well, I'm going to have this lady in Portland. She's going to be calling you. You need to tell her that I can stay there, and then they're going to give me a free bus ticket to Roseburg, which was, I never should have done that. I never should have got back with him. As, as soon as he got to Roseburg, he started fucking all the, the tramps and hoes. In fact, he didn't even show up to where he was supposed to meet me. For about two weeks, he was fucking some hoe down there. Some bitch with long red hair under the sh short bridge. Some bitch with really short blonde hair under the large bridge. Like a really drunken whore over in the park. You know, he was fucking them everywhere. <laughs> He was screwing all the hoes and tramps, I swear to God. I don't know how he could do it, really. But, um, yeah. So, and then I was like, okay, I want to get the fuck, because I was like, I'm done with this shit. And I thought, you know, because I got a restraining order against him, and um, I just didn't want to see him around town anymore, so... I was like, I made this plan and I was going to leave the state. So I, that's when I uh, traveled over to Denver and I was in Denver for a while. And I thought, this is great. He's gone out of my life and I don't ever have to see him again. And all of a sudden, whoop, there he is. I'm sitting there waiting for the, um, for the gates to open up for the shelter. And here comes Jerry Martin Smith walking up to me. This is after, like, I know that there's, that something fucked up is going on and I'm like uh, being investigated or murdered or something. He walks up to me and he's like, he, he lifts up his head and he goes like that. And I don't know if this is a test or something like the FBI was expecting me to freak out or get violent with him. But I like, I seen him and I was like, Oh fuck. No, I turned around and, ran to the gate and I'm like, somebody kill me, somebody kill me, because I just did not even want to see his fucking face again, and this motherfucker followed me to Denver, and uh, at that point, there was no, uh, I didn't have any attachments to him anymore, so... I didn't want to see his, uh, his ugly face. I didn't want to see him. 
Well, then fast forward to later on when I was in that Catholic shelter, Catholic community shelter in Denver. Then I walked outside because I was going to go to the store or something. And all of a sudden, the FBI, when I went out the door, all the, the FBI were going by. They all had black windows, black windows. Nothing but all these cars with black windows going by both directions. And I'm like, these are all FBI people. I go, what in the fuck? Did I, did somebody I know die or something? And as soon as I said that, these two FBI agents that used to be in my ceiling that have been like following me around forever, they, they drive by in this truck they honk the horn, beep, and they both like look at me like this. And I thought, okay, I guess that's a yes. So now I'm thinking this is like a nightmare. This is like, well, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like somebody I know has died, and now the FBI are swarming up upon me again. Uh... I really didn't know what to do, and I'm like, well, they'll figure it out that I'm not guilty of anything. They never figured it out. Later on, they, that guy, when I finally left there, that guy Richard in Arkansas told me that it was Jerry Martin Smith that died. And I tried, I called the coroner's office just recently. I tried to figure out if they had Jerry Martin Smith in there ever and they said that uh, no they didn't but that doesn't mean that he didn't die it means if he died in the hospital then he might not be there on their list or whatever so I guess I'll never ever get to know how Jerry Martin Smith died I was really curious about that. I wanted to know how he died. He probably ran his mouth off to the wrong fucker. The wrong motherfucker. He probably got run over, shot, stabbed, beat. How, however, how else can you die? Uh, strangled. Somebody killed him and it wasn't me. Or he died from the parasites that the FBI was putting into him, finally. Uh, I don't even know how he died, but... If he was murdered, it's probably because he ran his mouth off to the wrong person. I'm pretty sure of that. Because me and my pit bull were not there to save his ass. And we saved his ass plenty of times from people that were trying to hurt him. I wasn't there to save him anymore. That's why he died. Or the FBI killed him. I thought it was a setup. I thought that they... It might have been a setup from the FBI themselves. Because there's autopsies, there's evidence, fingerprints, blood evidence, witnesses. And by the way, there wasn't a moment that the FBI was not watching me in Denver. They were up in the ceiling watching me, everybody in the shelter was watching me. When I left the shelter, there was cars watching me. When I'd walk down the street, there were people in buildings watching me, helicopters watching me. They knew where I was 100% of the time. But I guess because I, I fit their, their uh, profile or whatever, the... I didn't have a chance. No chance. 
totally unfair what has happened to me. Totally not right. Not legal. It's not... How can you call something an investigation when you're murdering somebody? Cops do an investigation. Police officers investigate. The FBI just tortures and murders with parasites, as far as I know. I didn't have anything against the FBI before. I had no idea what they did before. I just remember when they had Klukinski, when they caught him, and they were uh, escorting him down the hill and stuff. I thought that they went after bad guys and they went after people that did bad things and they uh, brought them to justice. They took them to court, got them convicted and sent them to prison. That's what I thought they did. I didn't know that they went around profiling people, uh, went around uh, poisoning people with parasites that haven't done anything wrong. I mean, I've done some fucked up things, but I'm, I'm not a fucking, uh, I'm not an FBI uh, criminal. No way. I'm not a pedophile and I'm not a murderer. There's only, there's only one thing I can do and that's die. So, here I am, dying. Anyways, I can't eat very well right now. Uh, I'm really nauseated. I think I might be getting a kidney infection real soon. You're not going to torture me for much longer. God's going to make sure of that.